All right, boys and girls, it's time for us to read the last chapter of The World According to Humphrey. We're going to be reading chapter 15 today, which is called Happy Hamster Day. In December, things in room 26 really began to change. For one thing, it got cold outside and a little chilly by my window. In the early morning, frost pictures would appear on the glass. One picture looked like a big snowflake. Another looked like a lion. Scary. Still, it was nice and cozy in my sleeping house. More snowflakes appeared. Not real ones, but cut out paper snowflakes bordering all the chalkboards. And there were snowmen made of fluffy cotton and pictures of candles and packages and sleighs. The holidays were almost here. Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. There were songs to be sung and presents to be wrapped and a big two-week vacation to come. The weekend after Thanksgiving break, I went home with Pay Attention Art. He paid a lot of attention to me. But sometimes, not every night during the week, Mrs. Brisbane would take me home to see Mr. Brisbane. And he'd put up his obstacle course and we'd laugh and squeak and have a wonderful time. The next weekend, I stayed at Gail Morganston's house. Friday night was really nice because she convinced her mom to let me watch while she lit the menorah for the family. And the food was yummy. I was glad that Mrs. Brisbane didn't take me home every night. For one thing, if I ran the obstacle course every night, I'd probably waste away to nothing. For another thing, I wouldn't have been able to see Aldo. Aldo could now balance the broom on his head. Yep, he'd put the tip of the broomstick on his top of his head and keep it up there for a while. He'd have to bob and weave and keep it balanced, and he made funny faces too. But one night during the week, Aldo pulled his chair up to my cage and said, Humphrey, old pal, I've got something to discuss. This sounded serious, so I put on my most serious problem-solving face. I'm thinking of getting Maria a ring for Christmas. You know, like an engagement ring with something shiny on it. I know, we haven't known each other for very long, and we wouldn't have to get married right away. On the other hand, I'm not a spring chicken, and I like to settle down and raise a couple of kids, and maybe a couple of hamsters too, you know? I understand, I squeak softly. So what do you think? Otto fixed his big brown eyes on me. Should I ask her to marry me? I stood up on my hind legs and screeched, do it, do it, do it! <clears throat> then he stood up and shouted, you're right, I will, I'd be crazy not to. He raced out of the room so fast, he forgot his cleaning cart. But when he returned for it, he yelled, thanks. Sometimes, most times, it pays to squeak up. The third weekend after Thanksgiving, I spent at Heidi Hopper's house and watched her family put up their Christmas tree. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Second only to the little tree Heidi put in my cage. It was my favorite treat, broccoli. And then it was almost a holiday vacation. Suddenly, it seemed as if we didn't have quite as much work to do in class. Everybody was planning the holiday party for the last day of school. One day, Garth, who never used to wait for the bell, stayed after school to ask Mrs. Brisbane a question. Uh, may I please bring Humphrey home with me over the holidays, he asked. Mrs. Brisbane looked as surprised as I was. Well, Garth, I thought that was a problem. Garth smiled broadly. My mom is much better now, and Dad says it's okay to bring Humphrey home. Mrs. Brisbane smiled back. <gasps> That's wonderful news. But I think two weeks might be a little much. How about the first weekend in January? Garth nodded, but looked disappointed. Tell you what, why don't you have your parents bring you over at our house to see Humphrey over the holidays? You can watch him run his obstacle course. Garth didn't look so disappointed anymore. On the last day of school, everybody was very dressed up. I had on my fur coat as usual. Mrs. Brisbane wore a red and green striped sweater and a green skirt. She also wore a Santa Claus hat. This was an entirely new Mrs. Brisbane. The dressing up Mrs. Brisbane. Class, I have an important announcement. We're having a surprise visitor this morning after our party. So there'll be no vocabulary test today. After the cheers died down, Mrs. Brisbane went out to the hall and waved. A minute later, you'll never guess who entered the classroom. Mr. Burt Brisbane! He was wearing a Santa Claus hat, too. He looked a lot better now. 
no gray beard or wrinkled pajamas. On his lap, he had a large box. Mrs. Bruce Wayne introduced him to the class and they all applauded. Then he told them that his surprise was actually for me, me, me. First, he pulled out something like my cage, only bigger. This is my gift to Humphrey. This extension attaches to his cage and makes it bigger. Now, you're all going to help me build Humphrey his holiday present, his very own playground. The kids squealed and giggled and clapped, and I couldn't hold back a squeal of my own. I could keep my homie cage with its lock that doesn't lock, but I'd also have my own park to play in. Mr. Brisbane gathered my classmates around the big table and explained his plans. Mrs. Brisbane unloaded the pieces. First, there was a seesaw, then a tree branch to swing from, a big jungle gym, and two ladders. One to climb on and one to walk across like a bridge. My, my, my. Saya held me while the other kids worked on my cage. She patted me gently and murmured comforting words. Meanwhile, Mr. Brisbane patiently instructed the children as they arranged the pieces. He made sure everyone got a turn. Then Mr. Morales dropped by to see how things were going. He was wearing a tie that had little Christmas lights that really lit up. He and Mr. Brisbane stood behind the children watching as my playground took shape. <clears throat> I'm sorry. He and Mrs. Brisbane stood behind the children watching as my playground took shape. Looks like Bert should become a teacher too, said the principal to Mrs. Brisbane. He already is, I heard Mrs. Brisbane responded. He just started teaching arts and crafts to seniors and kids at the community center. So he's made a new start, said the principal. Yes, thanks to Humphrey. I believe those words were the best present I have ever received. Guess what I got my kids for hamster? Guess what I got my kids for Christmas? The principal asked. A hamster. Maybe it's a present for me as well. I think my papa will enjoy it. When Saya put me back in my cage, everyone watched as I raced to my new playground, climbed the jungle gym, made a leap to the tree branch, and jumped over to the seesaw. Now I could have recess any time I wanted. Whoopee! Just then, the room mothers arrived with cupcakes and juice. While they passed the food out, Saya and Miranda slipped quietly out of the room. A little while later, Mrs. Brisbane announced that she had another surprise. Gifts for the class! The door opened and in came Miranda and Saya, wearing red dresses trimmed in white fur, not real fur like mine now, and white fur hats. They each had a basket filled with small presents and they danced around the room singing a song about the wonders of winter while they passed the gifts out. When the kids opened their packages, they each found a keychain with a small furry toy hamster attached. The hamsters came in all colors, red, green, purple, gold, silver, nice. The room mothers presented Mrs. Brisbane with a gift, a pair of red earrings, which she put on right away. I already thought it was the perfect day, but it wasn't really quite perfect until Mr. Morales peeked out into the hall and announced that he had a big surprise. I wasn't sure we could handle much more surprises. And then she walked in, the biggest surprise I could ever imagine. Miss Mac was back! She was wearing a long flowered skirt with a bright red blouse and she had a butterfly in her hair. Not a real one, of course. She also had a huge canvas bag with her. Remember me? She asked with a huge smile. My classmates were thrilled and they all rushed over to her side. I was so surprised, I was positively squeakless. Mrs. Brisbane made everyone sit down again and asked Miss Mack. Of course, she insisted on calling her Miss Mac Manera about all about her travels. <clears throat> Miss Mac told us about the rainforest and teaching in a school in Brazil. Then she opened her big bag and took out a stack of holiday cards. Her Brazilian students had made a card for each child in room 26. While my classmates were sharing their cards with one another, Miss Mac came over to see me at last. Well, I can see by your cage that you've done very well for yourself, she said with a smile. And here I thought you'd be pining away from me. I have! I squeaked. She reached into her big bag. And I have a present for you too, but don't tell anybody. She pulled out a brand new tiny notebook with blank pages, lots of them. And a new tiny pencil with a very sharp point. 
I thought you might need this. Then she tucked it behind my mirror. Miss Max stared at me a little longer, then softly said, I've seen a lot of creatures in a lot of places in the last few months, but you're still the most handsome and smartest of them all. Yes, yes, yes. And don't worry, I'll be back again to see you soon. She was still the same wonderful Mrs. Mac. I'd followed her, I would follow her to the ends of the earth, I thought, or at least to Brazil. But then it hit me. As much as I love her and she loves me, Miss Mac doesn't need me. Not as much as the Brisbanes and my classmates and their families do. Maybe that's what Miss Mac was thinking when she left me in room 26. This is where I belong. All too soon, the bell rang. School was over for the day. School was over for the rest of the year. My head was reeling from all the surprises and excitement as we headed out to the car. In the parking lot, Aldo raced over to greet us and wish us happy holidays. He had come to pick up Richie, too. I hope you have a very happy holiday, too, Mrs. Brisbane told Aldo. Aldo grinned until his huge mustache shook just like Santa's tummy. I'm sure I will. You see, I just got engaged. I'm going to get married. Yahoo! I squeaked with delight. Aldo leaned toward me. Thanks, my friend. That night at the Brisbane house, there was one more surprise. The doorbell rang and a very tall and good-looking young man appeared. He was wearing a Santa Claus hat, but he wasn't Santa. He was Jason, the Brisbane's son. He had come all the way from Tokyo to surprise his parents. They were so happy to see him. They both cried just a little. I almost cried too. Soon the house was filled with friends and neighbors, and Mrs. Brisbane played piano while everyone sang carols and drank hot cider. I nibbled on a raw apple and squeaked along. Later that night, when the house was quiet, I thought about all I had done in the months since I had left the Petorama. I didn't know anything about the world then, but I've sure learned a lot. I can read and write, and I know all the state capitals. Just ask me one. I learned you should never ever turn your back on a dog and that it is a good idea to turn off the TV once in a while. I found out kids have problems and so do teachers and principals. Sometimes all people need is a little encouragement. Most of all, I learned that one small hamster really can make a difference. I decided to write down some of all the things that I've learned from my adventures, but there was just one more line left in my first notebook. So I thought and thought, and then I scribbled down exactly what I was feeling deep in my hamster heart. Joy, joy, joy to the whole wide world, and that includes you. Love, Humphrey. I hope that you enjoyed that book, and if you really enjoyed it, his adventure is not over. Just like Dooney B, there are many, many books in this series. I don't actually have any more here at my house, but if I ever can get back to the library, I'd be happy to check out the next book in the series and read it aloud to you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you.